Asmongold's bedroom wasn't the only thing infested with bugs last week, as Arena was also completely broken. Anyway, after a week of chaos, Blizzard has stepped in with even more class tuning. We're here to once again predict what might be Sleeper OP in the new patch. But hey, psst, come here. We're expecting some re-rollers this week, which means some of your lobbies will look like this. Yeah, we know. Not great. You're going to need some help in order to solo carry. We've got you covered with a bunch of class guides at skillcap.com including a brand new course just for casters that teaches advanced mechanics you need in order to climb. Don't worry, we're making one for melee and healers too. Our class guides are proven to increase your damage and healing because we made them alongside the biggest cats around, including AWC winners and BlizzCon champions. Anyway, if you want to get ahead in these chaotic times, visit the links below for an exclusive discount offer to skillcap.com and lock in our 400 rating gain guarantee. You won't regret it, we promise. Anyway, let's start things off looking at the biggest changes to melee DPS. Both warrior specs are seeing some pretty significant damage buffs to many core rotational abilities, like Mortal Strike, Rampage, and Execute. We should also note that both specs got some PvP-specific buffs too. Obviously, these are net gains overall, but we doubt that Warrior will suddenly be S-tier. We'll talk about the Feral nerfs later, but right now, competition is pretty stacked in the highest tiers, especially as every rogue spec seems highly competitive. As we've discussed in the past, Warrior suffers some defensive issues. Of course, more damage helps, but you can't do any damage when you're dead on the floor or being blasted by wizards. Fury was obviously really busted at the start of the expansion because its damage was so ridiculously overtuned, but then people figured out you can just kill the warrior and after a while people stopped complaining. So for now, we're going to treat both Arms and Fury as wild cards. We don't expect them to be S tier, but possibly A+. The King of the Jungle is getting some nerfs this week to Incarnation and, well, King of the Jungle, which will now only increase movement speed and healing taken by a maximum of 9%, down from 20. But in case you forgot, Feral randomly got some buffs on October 23rd for some highly logical reasons, which means that the only change that matters is the nerfs to King of the Jungle. Ferals are definitely going to be a better target in some lobbies, but their pressure will still seem insanely strong every two minutes. We'll keep them on the S tier for now. Before we dive into our updated tier list, we need to talk about Rogues. The mini rework was actually quite beneficial to both Assassination and Outlaw. On top of this, something we will cover later is that Demo might be making a huge return, while Holy Paladins might dip slightly in representation, which means more value for Assassination in the current meta. And together, we think that spec is poised to move up at least half a tier. Outlaw has caught us by a bit of a surprise. We've seen it as a trending spec in weeks leading up to the rework, and now it's starting to explode. We think with enough time, more people will start to experiment with Outlaw across both regions. That brings us to our updated melee tier list for the new patch. As we mentioned, both warrior specs are going to be complete wild cards, falling somewhere between A and A+. Even though we didn't discuss it in detail, Enhancement got a small nerf to some janky flame shock damage after its rework. Overall though, we still don't think the spec feels exceptional at all in Solo Shuffle, and is more or less a weaker version of Ret Paladin by all accounts. We should also note that Blizzard did a last minute nerf to Sub Rogue Burst, which we don't think will affect its rankings. Anyway, let's move on to ranged DPS, where there are some pretty significant changes. Balanced Druid is getting some PvE buffs that probably won't affect much, including buffs to Wrath, Starfire, and Starfall, with a very small nerf to Star Surge and some other things like Mushrooms and some Moon Spells. Boomies are also getting a minor defensive buff to Frenzied Regen and a super weird buff to Rejuvenation and Wild Growth, which is a talent they don't even take. Despite the fact that Boomkins now have double Incarn, we might have overranked them last week and will be returning them back to the A tier. Hunters are where things start to get a bit tricky. Both BM and Marks are getting significant changes, including PvP-specific nerfs to Dark Ranger. And even though both specs were infested with bugs last week, BM is clearly coming out on top. BM Hunters are seeing a key nerf to Barbed Shot, which translates to less consistent damage, but at the same time, we are seeing a buff to Stomp, which might not seem like a big deal, but actually helps their call the Wild Burst thanks to Blood Frenzy. Overall though, BM Hunter has clearly emerged as the most popular and most dominant Hunter spec, and despite some nerfs, we think we might have underranked it last week and will be moving it back to the S tier. Marksmanship on the other hand, might actually be the worst Hunter spec overall, especially this week as two key Dark Ranger talents were also nerfed. With that said, the patch already did some pretty significant damage with the removal of Overshadow, which buffed Aim Shot and Rapid Fire by 20%. For now, we're going to move Marks down half a tier, but we still think there may be some potential for Sentinel. Nonetheless, the spec is definitely worse and is a high tier wildcard at best. 
Shadow Priest is another high tier spec to see some nerfs this week, as their controversial Void Leech hero talent has been nerfed alongside Collapsing Void, which means slightly less tankiness and burst. Without question, Shadow was one of the strongest casters in recent weeks, and held a strong lead as the most popular DPS for quite a while. Part of this was due to the fact that it was so incredibly tanky with Void Leech. Shadow Priest put teams into a catch-22, either attack a tanky target or get blasted by damage. We think that these defensive nerfs, along with the buffs to warriors, will be enough to bump Shadow down half a tier. Ellie Shaman was another spec we underranked last week. Even without bugs, the spec felt S plus tier. This week, the spec is getting hit with some nerfs to Ascendance and more specifically, Elemental Overload damage, which is part of what caused Ellie to get those big one-shots. But what people should realize is that Overload damage is around 10% of their damage breakdown. Ancestor damage will still be really high, and Ellie's can possibly dodge some of these nerfs by simply going back to Haste instead of stacking Mastery. So despite being a bit worse, we think Ellie will be quite strong and still one of the best casters in the game. Demo Warlock is where things get very, very interesting, as the spec is getting some massive buffs once again, specifically to Dreadstalkers, which now have a 100% chance to generate a demonic core. We've said in the past that Demo is simply plagued by the fact that it needs to hard cast, but this change alone is a pretty big quality of life improvement. Demo will also be getting more burst with the Grimoire Felguard buff too. Overall, their gameplay loop will feel much smoother, and we think it will be moving up at least half a tier, if not more. Destruction Warlock is also seeing some massive buffs too, with Chaos Bolt, Immolate, and Incinerate all getting big damage increases. These days, Destro Warlocks are more like an Affliction Ellie hybrid, having so much instant cast damage to work with, but not necessarily having the best finishing power. These damage increases are pretty big, and we think that Destruction will also be moving up half a tier. In the next week, we expect Affliction's lead to slowly fade, as both Demo and Destro will be way more competitive. Anyway, that brings us to our updated range DPS tier list, with plenty of competitive specs in the new meta. We're going to be moving Frost Mage back to the A plus tier for now as there are clearly better specs in Solo Shuffle. Anyway, now it's time to wrap things up with the biggest changes to the healer meta this week. Mistweaver Monk saw a huge spike in power last week and is actually getting a mix of PvE centered buffs along with a 6% healing increase overall. These aren't coming for free, however, as the Sith Lord style crackle healing is getting a small nerf. Who would have thought that an AoE lay on hands was a bit OP? Anyway, Monk was a wild card last week, and for now, we're going to move it up at least to the A plus tier. This might seem like a hot take, but we still think there is at least one and maybe even two healers that are better in solo shuffle, since Monk still doesn't have the best cooldowns in the bracket. One of those healers is, without a doubt, Disciplined Priest, who are getting a 20% buff to Radiance alongside a 15% buff to Flash Heal, which help offset some pretty minor nerfs to Premonition of Solace. While Disc won't have the big cocoon anymore, they are getting more consistent healing, which is a big quality of life improvement in Solo Shuffle. There's a possibility that Disc could be the best healer once again in Solo Shuffle and will be remaining on the S tier. Holy Priests are getting some buffs too, but we don't think they're nearly enough to be competitive. In both regions combined, there are only 13 Holy Priests above 2100. It's still the worst healer in Solo Shuffle by far. Earlier, we said that there might be two healers better than Mistweaver Monk, and one of those is still probably Holy Paladin. Holy Paladin is getting a long list of changes, including a 10% nerf to Word of Glory, slightly less mana regeneration, and a hit to one Holy Shock modifier. While these changes certainly do hurt, Paladin had such a massive lead over the other healers in recent weeks and will be staying on the S tier once again. Now before we reveal our healer tier list, there were some buffs to some of the underperforming specs too. Last week we predicted that Rest of Druid would be an A plus tier, but we think it's still a bit behind and we'll be moving back down to A. It's getting some rather irrelevant buffs to Call of the Elder Druid and Dream of Scenarius, which are the Fist Weaver style talents that only see play in 2v2. Resto Shaman is getting some more relevant changes this week, with both Healing Wave and Healing Surge getting a 15% buff, but again, we don't think this will change their rankings relative to other healers. Anyway, that brings us to our updated healer tier list for the new patch. Despite a mix of nerfs and buffs, we still think Holy Paladin and Disc Priest will have a strong lead in the meta, with Mist Weaver trailing slightly behind. Did you know that last expansion alone, we helped thousands of healers just like you hit their rating goals? Like Gizmo here, a Resto Druid hard stuck at rival with over 5,000 games played, who gained over 600 rating in a few weeks just by using skill cap. Our damage and healing courses save you weeks or even months of your time, condensing down everything you need to know into bite-sized videos. You don't have to be scared to sign up because we have a rank up guarantee that promises you will gain at least 400 rating while using our service. So if you're serious about climbing, visit the discount link below to get started. Anyway guys, we want to thank you all for watching, see you soon.